Welcome back to Tree Line Pursuits. Today in this video cast, we're going to talk about dehydrating your own backcountry meals. Uh, for my purposes, for elk season's coming up, we're in mid-August right now. So I've already made a few meals and I have them packaged. Um, but today we're going to kind of start a series where we're going to cover from beginning to end, um, kind of the way that I prepare it. Um, for those of you that are kind of new to dehydrating, um, you're going to realize real quickly that dehydrating meals and um, particularly meals and trying to rehydrate them, meaning cooking them, is, is a little more involved than rehydrating and cooking freeze-dried meals. The dehydrated process um, does take a little, little longer with the hot water added, boiling water, to re, reconstitute and actually you know, prepare the meals than, than a normal freeze-dried, for example, Mountain House. But the end result, as far as flavor-wise, I've found um, is pretty is pretty daggum similar, and in mo in most cases for me doing my own foods, I think better. Um, what you have to do is put a little thought into the meals that you're going to do and how you prepare those meals. We'll talk about that, and just that process of getting it ready to be dehydrated. If you do, if you take some steps there, you can make that whole rehydration cooking process go much smoother. So we've already made a few batches of jambalaya. Um, we made some elk chili and we made some elk stroganoff and we already have that packaged and it's in It's in the freezer right now. I store it in the freezer. It doesn't have to be in the freezer um, I don't you know obviously add any preservatives or anything like that to my feed food All I'm doing is dehydrating it. So as long as I have space in there. I'll just keep it in there So today we're going to start the process. We're going to prepare the food uh, We're going to get it into the dehydrator and then we'll come back and finish up the segment, taking it out and showing you how I package it. Um, I've decided to take my, I know a lot of guys that package it into freezer Ziplocs and cook them in freezer Ziplocs. I decided to take one step further and I went to, uh, we'll talk about this, Sorbonet Systems and bought the actual stand up Mylar pouches that can be vacuum sealed and have the tear off top of the zipper. Very similar, if not identical to what Mountain House uses. So that makes the process really nice. It makes cooking it really easy for me, and you'll see that at the end of this segment. But to start with, we're going to just go through how we um, actually get the meal ready to go into the dehydrator. So first of all, my amazing wife um, cooked up some elk uh, spaghetti, our last batch of elk. I was lucky enough to harvest three elk last year, and we we're on our last bit of hamburger. Our family eats a lot of elk. So the pressure's on, September's here, September's coming. So um, I think I have four elk tags this year in a couple of different states, and so we'll see if we can fill some of those. Um, but what we did different with the spaghetti was uh, a friend of mine, Ty Stubblefield, AKA Three Arrow, here in Missoula, told me to use angel hair pasta instead of the regular pasta because they would be thinner, it'll dehydrate easier, and it'll rehydrate better when we're cooking. So that's what we're gonna do here. So we've ground our meat up pretty fine. I mean, we've cooked it and then we've, we've, we've chopped it up pretty fine. We've added the angel hair pasta. And um, so now we're gonna spread it in a really thin, let's call it an eighth to a quarter inch onto cooking sheets that will go on the trays in the dehydrator. I'm using the Cabela's 80 quart or 80 liter commercial dehydrator. Uh, there's a lot of great ones out there. I know Ryan Lampard's in help. If you really want to follow somebody that really knows what they're talking about, I think it's Hunt Harvest Health with Ryan and Hillary Lampers. Um, they're amazing. They do a lot of meal prep. They do a lot of gardening. Um, he's big in the dehydration, his own meals as well. So he's another great resource. Um, I'm kind of an amateur at this. I've learned a few things from watching them and listening to them. Um, but I've decided that I want to take the leap and do all my meals this year. So. Basically, I've got super cheap, just regular old um, cookie sheets. And we're gonna take parchment paper. Um, the parchment paper seems to work the best because it, it really helps with the drying process. So we, we got the parchment paper just the size of the pan. So we're gonna take out the spaghetti here. And again, it's just normal cooked spaghetti, however you like to make it. And we're gonna put it on the trays. And then we're really just going to work to get it real thin. Um, we're just going to spread it out. I have found so far in almost all the products, um, not products, in the meals that I've made, when you go to reconstitute and cook them, for every cup of dry dehydrated 
meal you have, you add a cup of water. And that seems to be a good formula when you're trying to figure out how much water to add. Um, so I write on the outside of my meals how many cups of dried product I put in each bag. And then I, um, I know that that's approximately how much water I need to put in. And we'll go through rehydrating it when we take it out, but I just wanted to tell you that right now. So you can see that all I'm doing here is just really flattening out this spaghetti. You can see there's tray number one. And um, we'll put that in our dehydrator. Um, and we'll do a couple more trays real quick here. It's a pretty simple, pretty quick process. Um, again, we're using parchment paper on cookie sheets. So one other thing I'm going to add to mine I do think that this angel hair pasta idea with the, this ultra thin pasta is going to be a nice trick for spaghetti. Backcountry spaghetti is pretty good in all of it. I mean you can't hardly beat it. So one of the things I like, I like spicy foods. So you can do this before or after you dehydrate. But I'm going to add some red pepper, some crushed red pepper to mine before I dehydrate it. So it's just built right into the meal. And we'll deal with the after effects of the red pepper um, out in the out in the backcountry. <laughs> okay. So there's tray number two. We'll finish up these trays and then we'll be right back and we'll be putting in the dehydrator getting ready to go. Okay, we have finished um, preparing our, um, our trays. So I didn't have enough trays to get all the spaghetti. So we're going to, you know, the spaghetti, you don't really need the trays too much. I just got used to using them because they're, you know, for soups and chili, like it's got a little bit more of a sauce to it. Um, it keep the sides of those trays help it keep from um, running over. But the spaghetti, you know, has a consistency that works fine. So I, I did some on the parchment paper and on the tray. We're going to see how it dehydrates compared to the ones that are on the, the trays. So we're going to slide all of our trays in. And I've got my trays spaced out in here. Every, every other slot to give it some real good airflow around. So we're going to put all of our trays in. Okay, so now that we've got all the trays in, we're going to shut this door up. We're going to set this thing to 160 degrees. 160 degrees, and we're going to go 10 hours. We're going to go 10 hours to start with. I really dehydrate it extremely well because I want it to be um, able to be stored on the shelf. I don't want any, I want very little moisture content in it. And when we package it, we'll put an oxygen absorber in it, just like kind of like you see with Mountain House, to remove all the oxygen that we cannot suck out with the uh, vacuum sealer. So we've got it set for 160 degrees for 10 hours. And then we're on. And so um, we'll let it run. And um, when we come back, we will be pulling it out and we'll go through the packaging process. Okay, so we're back and we are about 13 hours um, after dehydration at 160 degrees in our Cabela's commercial dehydrator. I like to go a little longer than normal because. I want our product to be really dry so that I can extend the shelf life and lighten the weight. Um, so again, we did we did an angel hair um, spaghetti with a little bit of uh, red pepper flakes. So we've got out our, our five trays and I wanted to show you kind of what they look like in the trays. We did an experiment. So normally when I do foods with liquid, I do parchment paper on the cookie sheets. The only problem is it kind of restricts the airflow a little bit from the bottom, I would guess. But if you see, you can see it's coming off it's really dry. So um, it comes off just like that. 
So then the second one I'll show you um, was one that we did, we just spread it out on the parchment paper, right on the grid. Um, air, could, air could get through this. Um, I really can't tell the difference. They, they both feel, um, super. So I'm, what I'm doing is I'm putting the parchment paper on and just kind of breaking it up a little. So we can package it. I don't want it broke up too much, but you want it, since it's dehydrated and not freeze dried, you want the pieces to make sure when you do add water um, that they can, they can permeate through extremely well. So here's another batch. I got my assistant here today, Mr. Eli, the hiking machine. Um, so he's gonna help me today. He loves to come down here and Eli pursuits world headquarters, don't you buddy? <laughs> Um, and uh, we just got back from a big elk scouting trip. We did 16 to 18 miles in, a, in two days. Uh, caught some grayling and did a lot of elk scouting, didn't we, bud? Mm -hmm. And uh, we found some good sign and the place looked really good. So now we've got to get our meals ready to head in in a couple weeks. Apologize for the noise. This parchment paper, once it goes to the dehydrator, it's very noisy. Um, okay, so this is the last batch. Okay, so we're going to get these trays and these trays out of the way so you guys can see what's going on. Okay, so what we're going to do here is, you know, I'm going to break this up just a little bit, okay? Um, not not too much, just enough to get it into where we can scoop out the cups. Okay, so this is our end goal. Um, again, like I said, I've decided to package them into Mylar packs with the Ziploc and the tear top. So this one is a regular Mylar pouch that I've got jambalaya or jambalaya, whatever you want to call it, in. And it does not have the stand up bottom. My second order of bags, I decided to order a little bit bigger bag. In case, they're roughly about the same cost, so I might as well have a little bit of bigger bag. They don't weigh that much more. In case I want to do a family size meal, if I want to cook more than one person, um, I can do that in these bigger meals, or I can go with one. So I kind of like the idea of these bigger ones. Um, so these are zipper as well, and they're mylar, but I, what I like about these bags is they stand up. So um, kind of like mountain house packs. I've got these from Sorbonet Systems. Um, I think it's Sor SorbonetSystems.com. You can Google it. Um, I got all of my Mylar pouches from them. I also got the clear vacuum seal pouches. These I'll put dried fruits in, apples, banana chips for my pack. I'll do those in the clear. Main reason I can just see, uh, and we don't have a lot of shelf life on those, and we're not cooking in the bags. And then I've got some oxygen absorbers that I can throw in, very similar to Mountain House has, so that once we vacuum seal them, we can take the last bit of oxygen out with these, and we're golden. Okay, when we cut from the last segment, we were, we were getting ready to vacuum seal a couple, and we had crushed up our product. Here are uh, two bags that we, that we filled and crushed, so you can see how they ended up. We got one two cups and one two and a half. So we, we thought we would do one more to show you the, um, um, the finished product. So when we put this in, here we decided that we're not going to put the oxygen absorbers in, like I mentioned. I think we have about two cups left. Um, I may be sorry I put that two and a half cups in. No, it's going to be about perfect. It's going to be just perfect. So we're gonna have we got three meals out of that pot of spaghetti. And they're big, they're pretty big meals. So put it into our vacuum sealer. Lock lock down the corners. Turn it on. Got 
Kind of wiggle it around, let some of the air get removed. Once we get it to where it's pretty decent, we will just press the sealer button, stop the vacuum, and nine seconds later, it'll give us the beep. Are you supervising? And unlock it, and we should be sealed up nice. Nice and tight seal on that one, looks really great. So we're just gonna make sure that the zip lock is zipped even though it really probably doesn't have to be because the actual heat seal is right above the Ziploc. So then again, we just label it. With the amount that you put in, that's, that's important, like I said, so you can add the proper amount of water. So spaghetti, two cups. There you go, it folds up nicely. And that will fit in my meal pack in my hanging bag pretty nice. So again, that kind of wraps it up. So thanks for watching. Um, make sure you follow us on Instagram at Treeline Pursuits. And make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're really going to crank out some videos now that we're getting close to season. I've got a lot of, I've had a lot of feedback for topics that people want to focus on. At Treeline Pursuits, we're really dedicated to supporting the do-it-yourself hunter, the public land do-it-yourself hunter. So most all of our topics and our videos and our articles on our website at treelinepursuits.com are pretty dedicated to that. Uh, we posted some really good articles up recently, so you might check them out at treelinepursuits.com. We got a Dutch oven pizza recipe. We got a backcountry llama packing article, and um, we're getting ready to post up a solo hunting article. Again, thanks for watching, and um, we'll be back with some video casts very soon. Thank you.